Hi, Don here, the German printing nerd. Well, you would not believe this after you just saw my last video. <laughs> Hard to believe. Hard to believe. I watched one of Mikey's videos uh, where he did a manual of bed level, but really manual means he went and uh, did manual bed level to the first position to where the nozzle goes down, light goes out, and then disable motors. Hey, I can recommend that for every one of you that has the D9. Because I did that, and now, well, let me show you a quick, let me move the camera around so that you can see that. First layer and second layer. That's the first and the second layer. The second layer that's being printed right now. And I'm truly amazed. Oh, and I'm using the new bed too. Cleaned it with uh, isopropanol alcohol. <clears throat> uh, truly amazed. Wow. And that part that I'm printing right now, that is. Um, let me get. Let me. Let me get something. I decided, I decided instead of printing a temp tower or some kind of uh, cube or a uh, temp bridge or something like that, because, uh, well, let's just say I think the filaments that I have that have been running on my one how I3 with this temperature, this temperature, this temperature, then I know all I have to do is just uh, subtract 5 to 10 degree and print it on the D9. Why subtract? Yeah, because I have on here the Microsys, Micro Swiss all metal hot end, and most of the time it needs about 5 to 10 degrees more on the temp on the nozzle, nozzle uh, temp. Uh, to get the filament flowing out smoothly. And supposedly uh, the D9 is supposed to have an all metal hot end. Yeah. Okay. Could be that it's all metal. No, no PTFE tube inside, but uh, <laughs> well, let's just say that the MK10 nozzle that is on it, that's brass <laughs> and not hardened steel. But anyway, instead of printing filly-fally uh I decided to print something that I need. And that is one of these parts here. Uh, this part up to here. W without this, this is already printed because it's missing on this side. And after that part is printed, then all I have to do is just print the four wings. All the other the, the wingtip parts, they are, they are also printed. And then I will finally have my X-Wing fi finished. No, not quite. The base plate needs to be printed too. The stand that goes underneath, that goes right in here, comes down. Yeah, it has to come down to something. <laughs> but that will have to be printed. But, uh, Wow, that is really amazing.
And I do think it is place it is maybe also good to know uh, as I said, I did this really manual uh, bed level. Uh, at first, I did it did it with a uh, cold bed, you know, because um, that normally you don't need a heated bed to print PLA. But I wanted to make a test, and I did this cold, set up everything, and then I heated the bed up to 55 nozzle only to 170 just before melting point and uh, I tried to measure with a paper my nozzle uh, the all the point all the four points again however I made five points I measured all four points on outside each corner and then in the middle the middle the middle is a little tougher but I think that is because of the material that's being used for this flexible plate. I do not think that it is 100% uh, the same width throughout the whole flexible plate. Because I have it spot on on all four corners and in the middle it is a little bit too close. But anyway, I did I did a uh, cold and then I heated up. I used my paper again. Uh tried to measure. Oh, it was not possible. The bed did raise up. So I had to lower all four screws again and do a complete new bed level. And um, in my last film, I mentioned that there are several parts that are missing. Well, there's three or four parts that are missing. Because in one part I was talking about uh, the bed. When I had it apart, um, the bed for the, for the heating element it does have some kind of uh, foam foam underneath it for insulation, but uh, I am not sure if that foam is really heat sensitive, um, heat resistant. Maybe up to 60, 70, 80 degrees with no problem, but uh, I'm not sure because uh, it looks like just a normal black f foam that is about one centimeter thick for insulation. However, it does its job. Uh, bed temp right now is at 40. Hmm, okay. My bed is at 40. Now it's probably probably the settings for this tile uh, for this part when I uh, had it printing on the one how confirm I get it back up to 50 just to make sure that everything stays on but uh, wow I just hope that everything comes out good but normally it should come out good. This was the last part that I was supposed to print on the one how before printing the, the wing parts. The wing parts, they're a little bit, uh, well, let's say just a little bit too big for the one how. So all four of them will have to be printed on the D9.
and if everything goes good, I will be able to start printing the wings tomorrow because this print that is running right now is a 13 hour print. And I don't want to mess with the settings, make it running faster or anything like that, uh, just to save time. Because I know the settings that I have been using for those parts on the on the one how with Cura, uh, the parts have been coming out really good. But I am really amazed. I am really amazed. But I must say, if and I can recommend it. I can recommend it in some way or another. I'm not sure how exactly to say that. But I can recommend the one how D9, truly. If you have the luck and you get the one how D9 without any problems, then I can say, hey, great. But if you do have a few problems, well, the Mikey, I will put a link down in the description or to his channel. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> oh, man. <sighs> Got to get rid of that frog. Um, yeah, I'll put a link down to Mikey's channel in the description. Mikey, he works for one home and he does make some uh, videos on some of the one how printers including the D7 the D7 that is a that's, I think it's a DLP I'm not sure DLP or the SLS have to take a better look at it be something that I would like to have but before that I would like to try and get my hands on a Cartesian with maybe a 25 by 25 by 30 print area uh, to replace the one how i3 because the one how i3 as good as it is um, well, let's just say let's just say it has over eight thousand hours of printing time, and it's still a good printer because I've always done all my maintenance on it and everything. And what I'm thinking about doing, sorry that I'm not looking at the camera. I just I'm just amazed from the print quality right now. <laughs> uh, but what I'm thinking about doing at the time when I reach five hundred subscribers. I will be doing a giveaway. I'm not sure, 500 or 1,000 subscribers, I'm not sure. But at 500 point, I will also, well, let's just say at 500, I would do a giveaway, and at 1,000, I would do a giveaway. At the 1,000, that will be this one, how? I3. And the 500. Well, I'm not sure. I will have to talk to a few of my supporters. But uh, for the one how I3, then I will... Um, well, let's just say that will be only for Europe, for Germany specifically, because... Uh, well, <coughs> let's just say that I was at the post office yesterday. I asked that lady there, uh, can you tell me what a small package, not over two kilo, would cost me to send to the UK? And she told me, uh, 18 euro 99. 19 euro for a package. 
I think DHL does not have enough money and now they are trying to rip off all of their customers with uh, extraordinary prices. I'm not sure. But that is that is really uh, no. But uh, imagine sending that one how I three outside of Germany that would probably cost just as much as I have in one month you know, to live. And that's not a good idea. And a uh, normal package here within Germany, if I send it up to 10 kilo, that would only cost uh, eight, eight euro. Uh, but uh, we'll see. But anyway, wow. <laughs> Yeah, take a look. That that print is running really good. I think that is the last. I think I I think I had set up for only one top layer, so that um, one top layer, and then it starts printing the the part with all of the support that is also needed. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, yeah. But, um, yeah. It's a. That's all for now. I think I've done enough talking. Um, I will try to make another video specifically on the one how especially because of the display and all the functions that it has how to find them sometimes it is a bit confusing when I think about my i3 you know you set up the bed temp, the bed nozzle, the nozzle temp then you go back and you're on the main display, and the main display, it shows you your temp, it shows you uh, all the information that you need. Well, here, on the D9, it's a lot different. But I'll, go, I'll make a video going through all that. Well, anyway, until the next time, I wish you all happy printing. Oh, and... Uh, if you're not a subscriber, do subscribe, like, press the like button, press the bell, and as I said in my last video, I'm not sure if it was recorded, a special thanks to Kat, my very first Patreon, thank you very much. Uh, link to my Patreon channel is down below. Also, a link for a coffee. I do drink coffee and cola. I need both. <laughs> Any dollar will help. Any euro will help to help this channel out. There are still a few things that I do need for this channel, which are expensive. But uh, anyway, until the next time, take care all. Bye.